All right, we are rolling. Howdy, this is Frank from Maggie Valley Fly Shop coming to you live from Asheville, North Carolina, home of all that is groovy, cool, and sometimes just flat out freaky. But anyway, I fit right in here. Um, all right, so today I wanted to tie the, what I call the real gasolina. And when I mean real gasolina, uh, that doesn't mean as opposed to a, a fake, well, maybe it is a, is a fake one. Anyway, a lot of people call any type of Pertigon that's in the greenish color a gasolina. At least that's been my experience. My understanding is the real gasolina is tied with um, this Hens. Let me hold this up. This Hens 233 um, Pertigon tinsel. So you can see it's 169th of an inch, I guess. Although this is from like Czechoslovakia somewhere or wherever, whatever that's called now. This is a um, 233 uh, color, which is really a, they call it a dark brown, but I don't know if you can see it on here. That ain't real brown. It's more of a copperish green. And it's translucent, so um, I'm using a 70 denier UTC black because with this being a little translucent, um, this really gives it a good green color, which I found to be you know, really effective. I don't know that if you used another dark like a brown or a purple, if it would really make any difference, but I just used the black. Um, for a hook, this is a really a kind of a bitty gasolina. For hook, I'm using the Fulling Mill 5125 in a size 24. Uh, this really, this 24 is Fulling Mill hooks. This jig hook is a little bit bigger, I think, than other hooks. This is really probably the equivalent of a uh, many other brands of hooks, a 20 or a 22. Anyway, um, and for tail, we're going to, I'll tell you what, let me, let's get this party started and then we'll talk about the tail as we're tying it in. So just gonna get started with a, um, dressing the hook back to the bend. Cut the tag off. Just like that. And then, on a tail, I'm going to use just a single piece of crystal flash as opposed to uh, Coq de Leon, which kind of makes me sound smarter than I think I am when I use that term. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right on top of the shank of the hook. So run it back to where I stopped dressing the hook at, which is about the bend. All right, then I'm gonna take the thread, advance the thread back up to the bead. Here I'm gonna take this 233 hens, little tinsel. Um, I keep it on a bobbin holder because this stuff can be a little springy. Uh, so when you cut it, um, Sometimes if you don't put it in the right place or if you sneeze or, um, you know, any type of air conditioning or anything like that, it it blows it all across the table and it gets gone. So we're going to secure this with a pinch wrap if I'm not too uncoordinated to do that. So I'm going to pull it through and then I'm going to take these wraps, kind of rinse and repeat, do the same thing we did with the tail. About into the hook and touching wraps back forward all right i'm gonna rest this on the side and i'm gonna take my whip finish tool and i'm gonna put a half inch in it you may be asking well why are you putting a half hitch in it there frank well because i'm going to use the um bobbin rest um, so I'm going to put the thread on the bobbin rest and now I'm going to use my rotary function of this Renzetti vise. So I'm dodging around the hook point. I've got the tail a little bent. So this is the... Ah. Great right rascal.
All right, so I'll just keep touching wraps going up all the way to the bead. Now that I got it up to here, I'll take my thread and I'll secure that tinsel with a couple wraps. Then I will cut this tinsel close as I can. So see with the, have it on the bobbin holder, you can just kind of pinch it that way. Ready to go on the next fly. All right, now, I'm just gonna take and do a few whip finishes. And really on this one, you don't have to do a whole lot on, of whip finishes because we're going to do um, use some UV resin. So cut your thread off. Got the thread secured. I'm going to take my Solaris uh, bone dry. And I'm going to get this tail. Actually, this tail got a little bit wonky on me, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and cut that off. I didn't do that earlier. We'll cut it off pretty short about like that. I'm not sure the tail's totally necessary. But anyway, I do it anyway because I don't know why. All right, so take the Solaris, which is a UV resin. Kind of going to put just a little bit on there. So I'm going to take it on the brush here and wipe it, wipe it off on the lid I'll put a light coating on here this is going to give it a little protection against the teeth of fish and I think it increases the shine so I take my um, UV light and I bake that sucker and there like that rotate it around a few times and there we go that is the gasolina with the crystal flash tail uh this one is a little bit wonky that gasolina slid off uh the body and it pulled it down so you can see it right there how it's down a little bit more than what i would like but um i promise you the fish will eat, eat this i use this Primarily uh, on the tag end, on the tag part of a two-fly um, on a Euro, uh, a Euro setup. So this is the top fly or the tag fly, um, and you know I use a heavier fly below that to get it down. But this uh, this one is often the one they come up, the fish come up and eat. So this is incredibly effective here in Western North Carolina. So um, get you some materials. Go to Maggie Valley Fly Shop and buy it up. They got uh, pretty much everything you need to do this fly here. And tie them up and go catch some fish. Enjoy your day.